Assalamu alaikum everyone. I hope you guys are doing well. And uh, so this is it, my last video before Ad Maths Paper 1. So just a couple of uh, reminders and, uh, you know, a couple of do-dos and the don't do's. Nothing that I haven't said before, okay? But yeah, one thing that I will mention that I haven't mentioned before is how you should attempt the paper. Basically, the techniques or the tips that you guys have been asking me for. So number one, just um, do a quick stationary check, make sure that you have everything in place, you know, your pencil, scale, razor, sharpener, uh, calculator, make sure that you have a fully functioning calculator. If you have two calculators, that's great. If you don't, that's okay, no need to panic. Just stick to the one that you already have, okay? And do not, my suggestion is, do not uh, get a new calculator at this point, as in don't use a calculator at this point that you haven't used before, okay? Just use the one that you have been using since the beginning, okay? Don't experiment with anything. This is not a good point to do that, okay? Take two calculators with you, like I said, and uh, when they ask you to write down the version of the calculator that you used while solving the paper, just write down the lesser advanced one, okay? That's not exactly cheating, but you know, just to be on the safe side, just write down the less advanced version. Even though if you write this down, that's perfectly okay. This is allowed, don't worry about it. But you know, just uh, just a precautionary measure. Again, okay? just, just for your own peace of mind, okay? Officially, this is allowed, there's nothing to worry about, okay? And then a couple of things you should not be worrying about at this point is what's going to happen tomorrow in the sense that what is going to come in tomorrow's exam, what the difficulty level of the paper is going to be like, and then eventually what the threshold is going to be like, that is not something that you, that's in your control. Okay. So worry about all the things that are in your control. You know, that is how well you prepare yourself mentally for what's going to happen tomorrow. Make sure that you have a fully functioning brain and you will have that once you get a good night's sleep. So these are all the things that are in your control. So just make sure that whatever is in your control is something that you work on. Whatever is not in your control, forget about that, okay? Then, uh, don't test yourself at this point. Just make sure that you don't end up solving a positive prayer, you know, just to see where you stand. This is not a good time to do that because the last thing you want to do is you want to enter into a state of panic. And the second you enter into a state of panic, you'll start doubting yourself. And again, that's the last thing that you want to do. Okay, at this point, self-doubt might already be creeping in. So you don't want to make that worse. That's having like... Part, partially having self-doubt is okay. You know, it's not exactly self-doubt. It's just the fear of the unknown. But you will just end up amplifying that if you end up solving a positive prayer and if you end up getting stuck at some point, okay? So uh, I've, I noticed that a lot of students have been asking me for the February, March 2023 papers, okay? So if even if you have gotten a hold of them, do not solve them. I will not at all recommend. What I will recommend is that you just do some light preparation, you know, like... Um, light studying exactly uh, to be precise like go over your notes watch the videos that uh, of the topics that you might need help in or the topics that you think are not up to the mark that's what i would suggest but like don't just don't pick up a pen in short don't pick up a pen to write anything down just watch the videos okay go through your notes if you have to and then um during the paper, just make sure that you, re I mean, before you start, make sure you reset your calculator and then watch out what the question is asking you in, uh, watch out for what mode your calculator should be in, in a question. So for example, if it's a trigonometric equation question, then make sure that your calculator is in radian mode if the question says so, okay? So in a couple of cases where our calculator has to be in radian mode all the time in kinematics, if you're dealing with trigonometric equations, number one, Number two in circular measures. So these are two categories where our calculator has to be in radian mode. Other than that, it has to be in degree mode unless specified, uh, unless specified otherwise, okay? Or unless mentioned otherwise. So just keep your eyes and ears open. And while solving the, okay, so this is very important. While solving the question, don't lose your focus. Doesn't matter. I mean, everything else that's going on should not concern you doesn't matter even if there is like, uh, I don't know, if there's an asteroid hitting the earth, okay? So that should not be something that worry you. I mean, I'm, I'm just joking, obviously. God forbid, that's not good. I, I mean, I hope that doesn't happen. But yeah, so what I'm trying to say is that when you're solving a question, then it should just be you and that question and nothing should distract you. Be laser focused. Why is that important? Because if you lose your chain of thoughts, if let's say, you know, you get, end up getting distracted and you lose, and if you end up getting distracted, then what happens is consequently, you end up losing your chain of thoughts. And if you lose your chain of thoughts, then, you know, it's going to take you a while to sort of get back into, uh, get back to the point where you, from, to the point where you lost your um, attention 
So that's going to cost you a lot of time. Okay. And you know, you can't even guarantee the quality of that focus. So just make sure that you don't lose track of the question. Don't lose your focus. Stay laser sharp. Once you're done with the question, then yes, you can like sort of stretch if you want, like drink water. Uh, but obviously you're not allowed to move. So, but while solving a question, just don't lose your focus. Okay. Very, very important. Don't take this lightly. Number, uh, well, I've, I've lost track of the numbers, but yeah, the next is that uh, plan your answer. That's very important, especially questions where you have to, you know, find out the area of shaded region, find out the equation of normal or equation of tangent, cutting the x-axis, y-axis and area, all those type of questions, questions that are like, uh, you know, eight to 10 marks, um, in some cases, even binomial, where you have to find out the coefficient of a certain power of x. So plan your answer. Don't just brainlessly start solving the question. That's not a good idea. Set new and small objectives for yourself. So if let's say you have to find out the area of shaded region and you've realized that the area of shaded region is bounded by a triangle and part of, uh, part of the shaded region is under the curve, then you should now set new objectives for yourself that, okay, I need to find the area of triangle and then that would lead to some another, that would lead to another set of objectives that if I need to find out the area of triangle, do I have the uh, dimensions to find out the area of triangle? If I need to find out the area under the curve, do I have the limits through which I need to integrate? I'm just giving you guys an example, okay? The way that I have been solving questions of area under the curve, if you've been following that, then you would know what I'm talking about. And just like that in binomial, don't just brainlessly start expanding and multiplying terms here and there. Just plan your answer, make sure that you, what you're expanding is relevant for whatever it is that you're asked to find, okay? So again, plan your answer that if I want the coefficient of x cubed, so these are the terms that I should multiply in order to get the coefficient of x cubed. Read the question carefully, very, very important. Okay, then uh, the paper attempting pattern. Now, there is no, one thing that you guys should keep in mind is that as far as AdMath is concerned, it's a very lengthy paper, okay? And it, it mentally takes a toll on you. So what I've noticed is that usually I recommend students to do the easier questions first, okay? In math, but in AdMaths, here's what I would recommend. I would recommend that you classify the questions into three categories, although you can classify them into more, but one category, number one, is that easy and short, you know, questions of quadratics, uh, modulus, and sometimes even polynomial, simultaneous. So these are easy and short questions, okay? And then you have uh, short questions, but some tricky questions, you know, like trigonometry, trigonometric equations. These are short, but tricky. Sometimes APGP also has a short question, but can be tricky. Okay, sometimes circular measure also. It's good. It may be of a three, four mark question, but it can be tricky. There have been tricky questions lately. So that's category number two. Category number three is long questions. Now, whether it's easy or difficult, that I'll leave for your judgment, okay? So for example, if your integration is strong, you might find those area under the curve questions easy. If your binomial is strong, you might find binomial easy, or I don't know, maybe the other way around, okay? And it's it's okay, it's perfectly all right to have like strong areas and weak areas, okay? It's okay, it's nothing to worry about. As long as you don't just leave it at that, you do something about it, you know? Just don't completely abandon it. Just make sure that you know all the concepts if occasionally you've noticed yourself struggling with the questions, that's okay. There's nothing to worry about. Just see what errors you've made and be conscious of them. Yeah. So as I was saying, three categories, easy and short, uh, short but tricky, and long questions. Okay. Could be easy, could be tricky. So what I would suggest is that the way that you should solve the paper is that you should first do two short questions and then do a long question. Why is that? Because you don't want to end up exhausting yourself by doing all the short questions first, because the long questions really need requires like 100% presence of mind. So you really need like laser focus and you need to be uh, extremely vigilant while solving those questions. So just make sure that you balance it out in a way that you don't leave the long questions for the very end. By the time you'll be quite exhausted and then the chances of making a silly error or the chances of not being able to understand the question correctly will go high. Okay. So remember, two short questions and then one long question. That's what your strategy should be. Okay, then uh, make sure to check your answer using your calculator, okay? You know how you can check answers for simultaneous equations. Make sure to show the working, okay? I'm not saying, okay, just do it in your calculator. Make sure to show the working for simultaneous, for quadratics, equations, inequalities, polynomials, and... Um, yeah, I mean, I've been I've been making a lot of videos on this. So integration area under the curve, you can do that as well. Rationalization, you can do that. You can find out the gradient of the curve at a certain point. So again, 
I've made videos in the past. If you haven't seen them, I would suggest that you watch them. And it's important to know what all your calculator is capable of so that once you're done with the question and you check your answer and you see it, you see that it's correct, you feel good about yourself, okay? And then you will be much more confident uh, when you're solving the more difficult questions or when you're solving the rest of the questions, okay? And now perhaps the most important thing, uh, again, I've been stressing on this from day one, get enough sleep, okay? Getting enough sleep is actually part of your preparation, okay? Just like how solving past papers, practice, practicing questions, going over the notes is part of your preparation. Just like that, getting enough sleep is also part of your preparation. So at this point, no matter what your status of preparation is like, after a certain point, at like after 10 p.m. max, okay, or I would say 9 p.m., you can only make it worse, okay? I mean, uh, don't mind me saying this, but at, from that point onwards, you can't make it any better. You can only make it worse. Why? Because you will end up stressing yourself too much. That means you won't have a fully functioning brain tomorrow. So that's the last thing you want to happen. You got to have a fully functioning brain tomorrow for which it's important to get enough sleep. Okay, you, this, you don't want this to happen to you that if once you walk out of the exam, then it clicks to you that, oh, this is what I was supposed to do in this question. Okay, the reason why it didn't click to you earlier is because you probably didn't get enough sleep. Okay, so don't let that happen to you. And yeah, like I said, just don't put yourself in a situation where you end up testing yourself. I would suggest that, you know, just turn your phone and WhatsApp off as well. Uh, at this point, a lot of friends may be asking questions. I mean, that's not exactly, I mean, well, you can't say that it's rude, but like just excuse yourself and tell your friends as well that, you know, it's not a good idea to solve questions right now. So I would suggest you also the same that you also stop solving questions and, you know, just relax and I'm going to do the same. So I'm just going to excuse myself out. So you can do that, you know, you can put it nicely and yeah, that's what I would suggest. So, and, uh, once the exam is over, do let me know how it goes so that we can kind of anticipate what's going to come in paper two. So yeah, that's it. Uh, I hope all the live streams, all the notes and everything that I shared helped you guys. And uh, don't worry about what's going to happen tomorrow. If you've worked hard, inshallah, everything else will take care of itself. So that's it. Uh, that's it for this video. I will most likely see you guys tomorrow. So take care. Allah Hafiz.